Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, gear chat uh, with Ashley and Matt. This is uh, Husband and Wife Outdoor Life uh, channel, and this is our sixth gear chat video. This is on the contents of our day pack. Um, I personally use the Osprey Escapist 20. Uh, Matt does as well. Um, it's a nice pack. I think it's actually built for um, cyclists. Uh, it's it's perfect for biking. It's got a, a lock on here for your helmet and whatnot. Um, but we found it to be perfect for day hiking. It's really lightweight. It has an integrated rain cover um, that you can pull out of the bottom here. It's got a nice mesh pocket in the back um, and various other pockets for storage. So I do really enjoy this pack um, and so does Matt. On the flip side, um, you do have one um, small shoulder pouch um, and in here I typically keep a chapstick. Um, not much more fits in there. You can't put a phone in there. Uh, Matt just keeps a roll of Tums and usually his compass in this pouch. It does have a small webbed hip belt, nothing too crazy, um, but it, it does provide some support and is nice. Uh, I did add a Z-Pax shoulder pouch um, this year, which you'll be seeing in some of my videos uh, over the next uh, couple months or so. I did put one on my day pack and then one also on my regular backpacking pack. I'm going to use it basically to store my camera gear. So it has a nice front mesh pocket here, which is also nice for like a cell phone, especially on dry days. Um, but I have some camera batteries in there and then inside is where I would store like maybe an extra mount or my GoPro camera itself. Um, so this makes it easy access for me and I don't have to keep getting in and out of my pack to get uh, batteries or anything like that. So it does have the Airscape um, back which is supposed to improve ventilation and be more comfortable on the hike. I've um, never had any issues with ventilation back there so I guess it's working. This is uh, the same pack as mine only in the black color and the bigger size. So his is the medium large um, which means it has just a little bit more capacity than mine even though it is a escapist 20 as well. I think his is like a 21 liter actually if you look at the specs and mine's more like a 19. I'm going to show you how the pack cover um, comes out of this and slips over the pack right now. So the rain cover comes out of uh, the bottom part of the pack here. Uh, there's a small zipper that if you just don't want to do. Pops out like this. It's a pretty neon yellow color. And it just fits over the pack like so. It's on there a little bit crooked, but um, you get the idea. So this is the pack without it, and this is the pack with it. So attached to the outside, I keep a Ziploc baggie um, on a carabiner that hooks right onto the strap. Um, not real high tech, but it works really well. Um, this is for my maps, so I uh, always have a map within like uh, arm's reach so that I don't have to dig through my pack to find it, um, especially when you're day hiking or, or backpacking in unfamiliar territory. It's nice to have a map um, at easy reach. I do keep it in a Ziploc to keep it waterproof. Um, you don't always need the Ziploc if it's not very rainy out, but it seems like we're always hiking in the rain, so um, use the Ziploc. I already mentioned I have camera gear in here, I have chapstick in here, so now let's open up the main body of the pack and I'll show you what I keep in there. So inside the pack itself, I do keep a Thermarest Z seat. So this is an extremely lightweight, um, accordion shaped uh, seat. So our sit pad. So these are really nice um, for sitting on uh, when you're day hiking. They're extremely small and very lightweight. Um, it, goes, it fits nicely right inside the Escapist pack. Uh, these are great, especially when it's wet out. Um, you don't have to sit on a wet log um, or a wet rock or anything like that if you're stopping for lunch or for a break. Uh, they have the insulated like silvery side here which um, I was very impressed. Uh, we were at a picnic table, I think it was at Holly Recreation Area, um, 
right after I had first bought these and wanted to try them out. And it was like, I don't know, like 10 or 20 degrees outside. It was extremely cold. And uh, the bench, I sat on the bench for a while and was making our lunch. And um, I actually got quite cold just sitting there. And I switched over to using uh, the seat and it was amazing the difference this made. Insulating, insulating you um, underneath your butt. So uh, these are really nice. Um, they are a little bit pricey for what they are. Um, if you already have the um, Z Light sole or the Z Light accordion uh, sleeping pad, you can actually cut one or two of the panels off and, and essentially have the same thing. But this is a little bit more packable, um, and I didn't want to cut my Z Light down when I bought it, so. Um, I did invest in one of these and both Matt and I do carry them in our packs um, and they are super nice so uh, definitely recommend these. I'm actually going to sit on it right now while I do the rest of the video. So next up is our first aid kit. So you may have seen this before if you watched our other gear chat videos. I'm not going to go through the contents now. If you'd like to see that I'll link the uh, gear chat that has um, all the uh, products that are in here and, and why we have them in our first aid kit. So I do take this item both backpacking and day hiking. Um, I do optimize the contents. Uh, I don't need to carry absolutely everything that I carry backpacking when I go day hiking. Uh, there are some items that are mainstays in here, but um, for the most part I just kind of optimize it per trip and look at what's needed and what's probably not needed and kind of lighten it uh, if I can. Um, just because, you know, you shouldn't carry extra weight if you don't need it. Um, a lot of our day hikes are very short, so if we did have an issue that was extremely bad, um, we'd be calling for help and we wouldn't be even using this. So this is more for like blister care and just minor, minor injury um, fixing. So um, you should carry one. Um, you should carry one that's appropriate to your trip. Check out our gear bit if you'd like to know a little bit more about what we carry. This is our bathroom bag. Um, I also did another gear chat video on this actually just a few minutes ago, so um, check that video out. Um, I'll also link this one if you'd like to know the contents of it, but it's everything um, you need to have in order to use the restroom in the woods. Uh, it's a good idea to carry this. Um, you never know, even on a short day hike, uh, when you might need it. So. Uh, toss one in your pack. It's really lightweight. Um, there's not a lot of stuff in here, so you can put it in a Ziploc baggie if you'd like. Um, whatever, whatever you need, um, but you should have one. Uh, I don't actually carry this one in my day pack. Uh, Matt carries it in his. Um, we typically hike together, although today I am solo, so it's in my pack. In addition to uh, a map and a compass, uh, typically Matt carries our compass, um, and I have the map uh, on the front of the pack like I showed you earlier. Um, I do carry our Delorme InReach uh, Explorer, Explorer, I think it is called. Um, and I'm going to do another video on our navigation and this in particular. I did talk about it a little bit in our first aid kit video, um, but this is a great tool uh, to have. So the, next, the next few items are kind of trip dependent. Um, in my top easy access pouch, I have a couple clothing items. So um, the weather's always changing in Michigan, and I kind of always got to be prepared for a bunch of different things. Um, during bug season, this stays in the pack. So basically, from like June all the way to like September, um, this stays in my pack, both day pack and uh, backpacking pack. This is a head net um, by Sea to Summit. They uh, look ridiculous when you're wearing them. But but uh, they're worth their weight in gold. These are awesome. If the bugs, uh, mosquitoes, black flies are really bad, um, these will save you. So I do keep this in my day pack during that time of the year. Um, this is a new item for us. These are Montbell, I think, Tachyon wind pants. They're really, really lightweight. Um, as you can see, they pack down extremely small. Um, these are a really thin kind of wind layer pant. So this is really lightweight. Um, it's easy to toss in my day pack or my uh, backpacking pack and offers a quick little layer. If you're cold, maybe you're sitting around camp um, and it's getting a little chilly at night, but it's um, not necessarily that cold that you want to put your hiking pants back on. Um, you can slip these on. Um, they do offer a little um, rain protection. They're not waterproof, um, but if it's just lightly sprinkling and you don't want to get um, wet, uh, you can give these a try. I'm not a fan of rain pants. Um, I 
tend to get too hot hiking in them, so this is a little bit better option for me. Um, they're also nice if you decide to wear shorts, um, and it ends up being a little bit cooler than you anticipated. Um, you can just slip these on easily, so um, they weigh almost nothing, so to toss them in my day pack is a no question. This is a very similar item to the wind pants. It's basically just a wind shirt or a wind jacket. Um, I forget which company it's by. Um, I think it's like Reebok or something like that. So this is just a cheapie I found actually at a REI garage sale. Um, somebody returned it because it had like a small stain on it. Um, I actually took it home and washed it out right in the sink. So um, it took like three seconds and it cost me like eight bucks or something. So uh, this, you'll see me wearing this wind shirt in a couple of our winter videos. I use it kind of as a wind layer. something like this, a base layer shirt or like a light hoodie. Um, they do protect you against a really light rain, but they will wet out in uh, a, pretty, a heavy rainstorm. So um, check these out if you're looking for a light layer to just kind of warm back up or like maybe you stop to take a break and you're kind of sweaty and the wind is cooling your sweat down and, and now you're cold toss this on and you'll warm up uh, pretty quickly. Um, and again, it's very lightweight. Um, I don't have a weight on it, but I'm guessing it's under an ounce. Um, so um, this just sits right in my top part of my pack here. If it were winter time, I'd also have a pair of light gloves, um, a light winter hat, uh, and a buff if I'm not wearing it, or a neck gaiter um, for my neck. Uh, I don't uh, necessarily hike in all of that just because I get too warm. Um, but it's good to have it for if you take a break or stop for lunch. You can toss that stuff on and you're going to feel a lot warmer um, and you're not going to cool down as fast. Always carry a headlamp. Um, this is the same one I take uh, backpacking. So this is a black diamond spot. Um, you never know when you're going to get stuck in the dark. Maybe you injured yourself and you got stuck on the side of the trail or maybe you got a little darker sooner than you anticipated. Um, sometimes our day hikes start kind of late in the day because we had to drive quite a ways to get to the trail. Um, so we always carry a headlamp, make sure the batteries in it are fresh. I don't carry spare batteries, um, but before every trip I make sure the battery is fresh. Uh, so uh, carry a headlamp. They're pretty lightweight. Uh, the Black Diamond Spot is the one I use. Matt just uses like a cheap Energizer, um, one from like Meyer or something like that. So it doesn't matter which kind you have, even if it's just like the hat clip kind, um, you should have one in your day pack. We do carry a small multi-tool. This is the Gerber Dime. Um, I talked about it a little bit in our first aid kit video. Um, this is the only real like tool we carry uh, backpacking. I don't carry a big knife. I don't carry an axe or a hatchet or anything like that. This is um, the biggest tool we have and it's very lightweight. I did put it on a small uh, carabiner um, that just clips right into um, in Matt's pack on this little uh, strap here that's inside a, a small interior um, pocket that has like some organizational pockets on the inside. So uh, this stays in Matt's pack and uh, we take it both day hiking and backpacking. I mean, it's a nice tool. It's got scissors in it, um, which is the piece that I use the most. The other kind of tool I guess I have is a whistle. So um, this is a Fox 40 Sonic Blast um, whistle. Um, got it as a gift actually, but it came off of Amazon. Um, I do carry this just in case we ever were to get into trouble. Um, it's just a secondary safety piece of equipment that weighs nothing, so good to have in our pack. Um, I just clip it on that little lanyard um, in that uh, inside pocket um, on my pack. So that's pretty much it for our day pack. The only other things we would carry is food and water. So that's going to be very trip dependent on the amount and what what we have in our packs. I can show you guys some examples of some snacks and lunches that we take on different trips, um, maybe in a later video. Uh, but we do uh, often use bladders for our water consumption on the trail. You'll see us using them. We do have the Osprey brand uh, bladder. I do like it. Some people don't. Um, I absolutely love ours. Um, we actually have three of them. And uh, I find that I drink a lot more using the bladder versus a water bottle. So this is a quick view of the Osprey bladder that we use um, in our day pack. So this is a smaller one than what I have for our backpacking pack, um, but this is the two and a half or 85 ounce 
the only time I don't use the water bladder is in the winter because the hose might freeze, in which case I just use a water bottle. Um, the Escapist pack does have a pouch in it um, right along the back panel for a water bladder, so it works out perfect. And I've also added a magnet to the chest strap, hopefully you can see that. Um, where the water bladder has another magnet on the other, on the like spout of it that you put in your mouth, and it clips right to that. So you have it easy access right on your chest. Um, and you don't have to fiddle around trying to find the hose. It's right there ready for you. Um, and here's that, the pouch where the bladder would go. Here. And then there are two side pockets on this um, pack that you can put water bottles in. Um, and they're easy access. You can um, grab them pretty easily uh, while wearing the pack, which is nice. The thing I wanted to show you was the magnetic clip that I was talking about earlier, right there. And essentially, you can see it on Matt's pack here, it just clips right to the sternum strap by magnet. Makes it nice and easy. Easy access. <laughs> nice thing about these two is they do lock, so not the magnet, but the um, mouthpiece. So if it's this direction here, it's locked. And if it's like this, it is unlocked so you can drink out of it. So you just bite down on the bite valve here and uh, suck water through the tubing. And it fits in nicely into the pack sleeve. It has a little clip to hold it upright if you wish. Um, I don't really think it makes that much of a difference. Hmm. That's it. Trying to do this gear video for you, but they've decided to do construction today by the river, and I'm sorry if there was a lot of background noise during that. It is also a little bit windy today, so hopefully not so windy that you couldn't hear me, and hopefully the construction noise wasn't too distracting. So I apologize for that, but thank you for watching. Um, I'll have another video posted soon. Uh, we have another trip uh, coming up, uh, not this month, but next month. Um, and we should have another North Country Trail hiking video up um, for the 100 mile challenge um, soon. We're hoping to do maybe a couple miles today and uh, maybe a few more tomorrow, um, kind of dependent on Matt's research. So that may or may not actually happen. So, but stay tuned. Um, I will have another video posted um, very soon. So check those out. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Right there, he just landed right in front of me.